All right, the name of the game is Emergency Psychiatry. I'll tell you the disorder the patient comes in with, and you have two seconds to come up with a first-line medication or medications, okay? Only medications, not psychotherapy. All right, first up, patient comes in with ADHD. What do you give them? The answer is stimulant medications, like methylphenidate or amphetamine. Next, the patient's shaking and hallucinating from alcohol withdrawal. What do you give them? You give them benzos, specifically the long-acting kind, like chlordiazepoxide or diazepam, to taper them down, if you can. If the patient's in delirium tremens, then you may have to give them a more titratable form of benzodiazepine. What about a patient with bipolar disorder? What do you give them? Ah, not so fast. Depends what they're presenting with. Now, let's assume, since this is the psych ER, that your patient's full-blown manic and floridly psychotic. What's that patient getting? A patient presenting with acute mania first needs some antipsychotics, preferably atypical, to settle him down. Okay, but what's a patient getting in for the long term after he or she settles down? Now your drug of choice is lithium, the most classic drug for bipolar disorder. The second line drugs are the anticonvulsants valproic acid, carbamazepine, and more recently, lamotrigine. What about a patient who is recovering from bulimia? That patient gets SSRIs. And for depression? SSRIs as well. Ah, this is our lucky day. What about generalized anxiety disorder? Ah, we kind of broke the trend here. For GAD, you need to remember that while SSRIs are still a first line, so are the SNRIs. Also remember that while benzos are the most effective drugs for anxiety, they're not the first line medications because of the dependence and abuse potential. What about obsessive compulsive disorder? This one too includes SSRIs and an SNRI, venlafaxine, as well as the tricyclic antidepressant drug, clomipramine. You're going to want to be a little careful about the tricyclics, though, because they are associated with a lot of side effects. Now, what do you use to treat a patient with panic disorder? Stop and think about this one for a moment. For an acute panic attack, the medications of choice are the fast acting benzodiazepines like alprazolam. But for the long-term prevention of panic attacks, you're going to want either SSRIs or the SNRI venlafaxine. And why don't we like benzos for long-term maintenance? Because of the dependence and abuse potential. By the way, the benzos are a diverse class of drugs discussed in a lot more detail in the neurology section, because there are also important anti-epileptics and anesthesia adjuncts. It's a good idea to review that section briefly after you're done with our little journey to the Psyche D, but for now, what's wrong with you, dammit? There's a waiting room full of patients you need to see. Ah, okay. Patient comes in with PTSD. What do you give him? Like the long-term management of panic disorder, PTSD's long-term management requires SSRIs and venlafaxine. Side note, all anxiety spectrum disorders that you just went over have SSRIs and one other antidepressant drug, usually an SNRI, as the first line. Remember that pattern, young Padawan, and for God's sake, go see the next patient. Schizophrenia. What drug? These guys get antipsychotics, preferably atypicals because they're safer, except for clozapine. What can a patient get for social phobia? SSRIs are still the first line drug, but for specific instances of social anxiety, like public speaking, these can be managed pretty well with either beta blockers or benzos right before jumping into the stressful situation. Finally, what medication can people take for Tourette's syndrome? Atypical antipsychotics, tetrabenazine, and clonidine can all be taken. Atypical antipsychotics are probably the most effective, but have the most side effects. So in this case, the cost-benefit analysis has to be done on a case-by-case -case basis, especially when you consider the fact that most people grow out of their Tourette's tics. Whew, you survived the onslaught. Now that I woke you up with all my yelling, you'll be alert enough for the upcoming drugs. Be warned. While for most of psych pathology, you could kind of get away with logical guessing, Psychopharmacology is extremely detailed and is actually pretty challenging as a result. Just know that, unlike for most of Step 1 pharmacology, there are often very important and testable differences between the different drugs within a drug class. And remember, side effects are key. You may not be thinking about going into psychiatry, but from no matter what kind of a doctor you are, there's tons of people who take psychiatric medications whose side effects and interactions can be catastrophic. I'm, I'm not even exaggerating when I say this. 
There's a separate section on medical emergencies in psychiatry that you should read, but the important point is pay attention to the side effects in psych pharmacology. This is probably going to be the most high yield both for step one and for real life.